obviously we have some Yellowstone fans in the room today, right? Yes. I'm a huge Yellowstone fan. I started from day one. Big fan. Uh, we have a panel of experts. We're going to talk about the music and the global impact of Yellowstone. Super excited about that. You know, I saw this article and I was like, this is so, this resonates that Yellowstone has single-handedly brought back the Western and country Western. What an impact this show has had. And I want to first talk to Andrea, who is the music supervisor, the amazing music supervisor, Andrea von Forster, and Sabrina Del Fiore. Now, Sabrina works with, at Paramount with me. She is the SVP of music strategy and also helps place music in the show. But let's talk about this iconic show and what it has single-handedly done for Westerns, bringing back Westerns. I mean, Taylor Sheridan's the one that obviously has, you know, created this world and, and brought it back. And, and we have the pleasure of, you know, putting the, the toys on the playground as far as, you know, finding the music uh, and, and having artists on the show. And it's been an honor because I love Westerns. The first time I ever talked to Taylor Sheridan uh, was on the phone and he was like, you know, welcome aboard. And uh, we somehow got onto our favorite movies and we agreed that Unforgiven is one of the best movies ever made. And so from then on, I knew we were going to be just fine. And uh, so um, musically, we've always just sort of got each other. And so, you know, we share music throughout the year. And, um, you know, I send, send things to him, he sends things to me. And then um, Sabrina is my amazing support at Paramount for making sure that, you know, we get everything that we need and, uh, and everyone on camera. And um, just to add to that, I mean, the first time I saw a Yellowstone script was year, nearly five and a half years ago. And it was like nothing we had ever seen hit our desks before. Um, and it was just incredible and different and really bringing back the modern day Western as a genre and what it's done just to really speaking about the culture and the lifestyle that really wasn't being seen in media very much at that time. Um, and it is, it's been, it's been, it's changed. It's brought back the genre. We see lots of other networks kind of dipping their toe into it now too. Um, but Taylor does it in such a very special way. Uh, but yeah, from day one, we just knew it was something really, really special and something we hadn't seen before. It's so interesting too, because, you know, I work at CMT and I hear all sorts of new music, but I really feel like I've heard more songs about cowboys and cowboy being in the title since Yellowstone started. It's not my imagination, right? No, we've had like cowboy, rodeo, anything to do with that kind of thing. And, and Taylor lives the life. He actually, you know, goes to horse shows. He has the whole like, you know, um, uh, roping and reining competitions and whatnot. Like that's his world. So everything that's in Yellowstone is very much true to his real life as far as and the horse events. And um, so also uh, for his horse events, I book those as well. So we get to use a lot of the artists that are on Yellowstone. So. Uh, Hayes here will be uh, performing at the Run for a Million in Las Vegas on uh, August 19th. And uh, we had Lainey perform at the same event uh, the first year that we had it, and then she ended up developing into a character on the show from that. Uh, we're really honored to have Hayes Carl with us and Danny Rose of Honey County, who have both had music in Yellowstone. And I really want to talk to them about the impact that that has had on your career. And you being a new artist, I know you've been doing this for 10 or 11 years, but explain what happens when you have a, sh a song that's in the show. Well, first of all, grateful to Andrea and Sabrina and Taylor Sheridan for having uh, songs on the show. I feel really special because I am, um, I believe, the only independent female artist with four songs on Yellowstone. So it's really cool. Yeah. Thanks. Um, it's, I was talking with Leslie before in the green room just about the, the songs that have been on and, and the impact that that's had on my music. And I've been really lucky to have music in different TV shows. We were talking about Nashville and the impact that Nashville had on the actual town and put it on the map. Um, one of the songs that was on that show was Love Someone um, and it was also featured on Yellowstone. But I will say the impact that Yellowstone has had on my music and just from a fan perspective and a streaming perspective has been so infinite compared to my songs on other TV shows. So That's it's definitely. Incredible. And Hayes, you've had four songs now in Yellowstone. Yes. Yes. What sort of effects do you, do you see immediate effects with streaming and sales and, you know, yes. fans connecting the dots and finding out about you if they didn't know you already? Yeah, all the above. I see um, immediate and long term. You know, not all shows are 
created equal, and not all platforms are created equal. And, and I, I've been fortunate to get a lot of songs and a lot of shows, but but uh, very rarely does that mean anything other than a paycheck. Um, but with Yellowstone, because music is such an integral part of the show, and the audience is so massive and so loyal, um, you see the effects uh, immediately. And um, I, I, two things: one, I remember the season four finale. A song came up, and I'd never heard it before, and it was a really great placement. And so I shazammed it, and there was like 1,200 people had shazammed this song. And the next morning, I just, as an exercise, did it again, and it was like 125,000 people had shazammed the wow. song. So that's how many people are actively engaging, not just, oh, that's a song, and maybe I'll check it out. It's they, they immediately are going to find out um, what it is. And, and just the other thing I'd say about it is, um, uh, I remember like getting a, uh, the, the show, it, it raises, there's a lot of people that don't pay a whole lot of close attention to music and what people are doing and where your careers are. And they can use a successful show like Yellowstone as sort of a, um, a, a way to, to place where you are in the, in the grand scheme of things. Right. And so I, I equate it to like the Tonight Show in the 90s or the early aughts, like, my neighbors might not know what I did professionally, but if I was on tonight's show, it was like my mom could say, yeah. you know, and everybody would know that I had arrived, right? Well, Yellowstone is the modern day equivalent of that to me because if you're in yellow, and they may not know what's happening in the rest of your career, but if you have songs in Yellowstone, everybody knows that that's uh, a big deal. So it's, it's, it's cool for us as artists Amen. in that way. It gives us legitimacy, you know? That's incredible that you say that, but it's like a badge of honor that, you know, because it is, it might be hard for some to think they can get on Yellowstone, which we're going to talk about here in a second. But I did want to bring something up um, that, Danny, you told me backstage, and I think that you can talk about your example of this, but also for Andrea. It's about where the song is placed and in which scene, and you brought up an incredible example backstage to me, if you could share that. Yeah, absolutely. Um... Andrea is so brilliant. Um, we've become really good friends over the, the Yellowstone years. Um, and she has such a genius brain because she's very specific in the scenes. Um, one of the things that Leslie and I were talking about um, was the song Love Someone. I'm going to bring that up again. There's a scene um, where Monica is, she's Native American and she's in this very frou-frou shop um, downtown. And this woman looks at her coming into her shop and she immediately... Um, stops her and accuses her of shoplifting, if you guys remember that in, in the show. Um, and during that scene, uh, my song Love Someone is playing, um, and it's all about you can't love someone into loving you. Monica is just trying to be there and be the best person she can be and love everyone around her, and yet there's modern society that's looking at her skin, looking at her thinking, oh, you're obviously a shoplifter. And one of the second examples we were talking about, um, y'all have watched the show, right? I'm assuming. Oh, yeah. Okay, good, 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 good. So you remember when Beth was um, in this terrible, I mean, she's been in many terrible situations. Uh, this one specific, uh, Rip comes to save her. There's like an explosion and her face is all botched up. I see some heads nodding. So you guys remember this scene. Beth is in a gas station. She's talking to the attendant. Her face is all busted up. And the attendant, if you notice, also has a big bruise on her face. You guys remember this scene? It's this theme of domestic violence. Um, and they're very, you know, they, they bring about themes. Taylor brings about these incredible themes that are not usually talked about, but, but are very specific. Um, and the attendant says to the, to the woman, or to, to Beth, and she said, how did you make him stop? And Beth looks at her, and she says two things. New boyfriend, big ass ashtray. And immediately, uh, my song, Cigarette, is playing. Um, what's important about that is that the song, you'll, if you listen to it, it's all about somebody who is extremely toxic for you, but you love them and you can't put them down because you're addicted to them like a cigarette, but they're, they're killing you. And, and it's so brilliant how she places that music in that specific scene. We know that Andre is brilliant. We, we all do. Um, I'd like you guys to meet Brian Schwartz, our 
manager, entrepreneur here, uh, manages Shane Smith and the Saints, who have obviously been on the show. How, from a manager perspective, how has that helped change their career trajectory, all of it? It certainly helps. Like Hayes was saying, you see it right away. Um, I just looked at my cell phone and I noticed on All I See Is You, which is the first song. Now, there's, it's interesting because you could just have the song in the episode, uh, maybe it's in the background, and it's not as impactful as if it's a part of the scene or in Shane's case, uh, season four, we had two back-to-back -back episodes with All I See Is You. And, in, and just it was like we didn't really know what was going to happen. And Andre didn't really tell us. And I think Taylor and Shane were texting, but I don't think Taylor – Said, said much, and so we were pretty surprised, um, you know, just about the uses, because that really has a different, that sort of makes a different impact in the result. Um, but the reality is you see the Shazams, I just checked, all I see is you is at almost 600,000 Shazams, which is hands down because of Yellowstone. Um, I mean, I think I probably checked before it aired and maybe it had 1,200 Shazams or something. You know, so now it's at 587,000, so that's, that's important. Also, um, I think what's really, a key or a succinct way of saying how it impacts Hayes um, or, or, or any of the other artists like Danny or whoever else, um, and Shane specifically in our case, is what Taylor and Andrea and Sabrina and everyone else at Paramount and um, the whole organization have done is they've, they've, shined, uh, they've shined a giant light on a scene and on a lifestyle that's existing and happening and like you're saying, well, your first question was, you know, you're seeing more and more, like it's a zeitgeisty thing to wear cowboy hats or to use the word cowboy or wear Western attire or boots. Or, and the reality is, is this scene has is, is, is existed, this world, this rodeo world, this rancher world. All, and what Taylor has done so brilliantly is shined a light on it. And then once, and he's a fan of music. He loves music. You know, you could tell what this guy's passionate about. He's passionate about rodeos and horses and ranching and, and, and Texas and, you know, and, and music. He loves music. And so I think when and someone who does music supervision or production is able to take uh, an artist they love or an artist that the showrunner loves or the director loves, the editors love, and put it into a scene where they can genuinely highlight that song, the impact is immeasurable. And with Shane, um, He's been out there a lot like, I, you know, you mentioned Danny's been doing this for 10 years, but still feels like a new artist. And that's how it was for Shane Smith and the Saints. And they were out there. They were growing. They were selling real tickets and doing clubs and small theaters. Um, and we had just gotten on a giant national tour with Whiskey Myers, which was really, really big. But it's when it all happens together and you have an opera, you have like a, uh, you're just profiled in a way where millions of people can see it it translates to more notoriety. So not only do you get your mom going, wow, you made it, but you also have a whole new slew of fans who like this music and maybe hadn't had an opportunity to learn of you yet. And so as soon as they do, and then they hold their phone up and they shazam and they go, who's that? That's when everything sort of, you know, it helps these artists get up the, the ladder a little bit quicker. And it's really impactful. The music discovery is so enormous for this show because, you know, it's very hard as a manager, you know, as an artist, you know, to cut through. So when a, a TV show can do that, you said something that really made me think about, which was the engagement. You know, you may have been on another film or TV show, but it didn't have the engagement that Yellowstone has. The amount of people, I can't watch the show without shazamming songs. You know, it's that built-in thing. But talk a little bit, Brian, about you sort of took it a step further with your band and you did some merchandising as well. Yeah. We, well, you know, look, as a manager, one of the things we're supposed to do is take advantage of opportunities and, and take them as far as we can. We want to, you know, ultimately what we want is for our artists to be heard and seen. It's not all about what can you sell them or what, you know, how, you know, how much money can everybody make. That's awesome. That's great. And it's important part of any career. Uh, but what we really want is this music to get out there and be heard and to be appreciated. That's why everyone works so hard. Hayes hits the road. Danny hits the road. That's why, these, that's why you do this. Um, with, and so being a manager and trying to take advantage of these opportunities, I was just thinking, well, now is a great time to, to see what we can do and how we can parlay this and how we can continue to turn people on to Shane and his um, sort of let's call it collaboration with Yellowstone. And we decided to reach out to Sabrina and to Andrea and say, 
Uh, what do you think of this? Can we make some t-shirts, some, some Yellowstone branded merchandise? Can we do a show? Can we create a festival event? You know, and so I, I would go to Andrea because Andrea is really amazing. Um, like Danny, I feel like Andrea and I have become really friendly over the last couple of years. She's amazing, she's a great resource. I could ask her, hey, do you think I can go to Sabrina with this? And she'll be like, no, definitely don't do that. <laughs> you know, or, or, you know, oh yeah, yeah, go ahead. That's not a bad idea. I think we could do that. Or, um, and so there's a lot of red tape with a big corporation for, for many reasons, good, bad, or indifferent. And um, I was thinking, no way they want to put time and energy into a, a Shane Smith and the Saints branded t-shirt. But they did, and we sold out immediately, and we didn't overdo it, we did a limited run. It's kind of cool, we wanted our fans to be able to get something limited edition, and it really worked. And I did try to do a Red Rock show. Um, it didn't work out. Shane wound up doing his own headline show and selling out in a day, which would not have happened. We would, probably would have sold out. It would not have, it would have taken three or four or five months, maybe even day a show, without the power of, of this, 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 you know, incredible show. It's like Grey's Anatomy was for yeah. bands back in the day. And I, I just, yeah. And it's a great show, too. You know, and that's the other thing. It's a great show. And, you know, as you mentioned with Taylor, it's authentic. The show is authentic. So, Andrea, I mean, I have to ask you this because not a week goes by that I don't get an email from someone saying, can you send my music to Andrea Van Forster? And I'm like, no, I can't. But tell us what you're looking for because... There's probably a misperception of the music that you are looking for and the difference between Americana, Red Dirt, Country, whatever. Explain that process. What are you looking for? And can people reach out to you? Uh, the, the end of that answer is yes. I'm findable on the Internet, so find me. Um, but don't go through my brother in Washington who constantly gets emails going like, hey, can you send this to your sister? He's like, who are you? <laughs> Um, but uh, we, the reason why I think the music in Yellowstone works is A, we have great, you know, like a great show, you know, great writing, casting, everything else, but we love music as much as everybody else does. And the reason why that works is that we feel the same way you do, you know? So it's like getting to be a part of somebody's story of someone that we love and being able to like give a leg up to anybody is the best feeling in the world. So it's like, we got a great show and great music. Everybody wins, you know? So um, uh, with the... The music that we use, it's not just country, and anyone who watches the show knows that, but a lot of people get very excited because they love the show, and then they're like, I sound like that. I'm like, but do you? So, like, we don't <laughs> we do not do a ton of pop country, um, and there's nothing wrong with it, and there's no, like, everybody has to be mad at one type of subgenre, whatever. We like it all. It's just that we tend not to use that uh, kind of pop country because it doesn't fit the storyline as much, you know? And so we use sort of like epically quiet things and, you know, and things that feel like, you know, your thoughts out loud set to a guitar, you know? So, um, or if we're, you know, in a rodeo or a roping scene or a raining scene, then we're going to go, you know, for fun and bunkhouse boys, same thing. So, uh, we go for energy and a lot of fun when we're in the bunkhouse, whenever there's pretty much horses involved, unless it's a montage, then we go for something more slow and thoughtful and more about like the cowboy life, you know, the cowboy way kind of thing. Um, and, or, you know, end of the episode montage is very often about things like, you know, the, the, the end of this way of life, because obviously the world is changing and on the show. And I think in real life, a lot of us have a problem with where some things are going. So, you know, it's like being outdoors and having this very like kind of, you know, um, rooted kind of job, you know, and it is your entire lifestyle to be a farmer, a rancher, you know, any of that it is going away. And I have a lot of people come up to me now and they're like, you know, my grandparents lost their ranch to eminent domain, you know? And so it's just like, you know, I hear that more than anything, which is really sad. And so um, it's tapped into something where I feel like a lot of people feel like they've not been seen or heard before. And so it's really nice to, you know, to get to talk to people and they're like, this is the music I would listen to, but I didn't know about it before this. And so we use Red Dirt Country most of the time. It's more kind of rooted in the songwriting. It's less produced you know, kind of Texas and Oklahoma kind of songwriters. Um, but, you know, we don't care where someone's from. It just has to sound good. And obviously you can make Red Dirt Country without being from Texas and Oklahoma. Um, and, uh, you know, basically it's kind of intuitive. So it's a little frustrating if someone's like, what do you need? And I'm like, I'll know it when I hear it, you know, like, um, and it's just knowing Taylor, you know, and knowing the, the storyline and the characters and knowing what's true to them. And you mentioned too that Taylor Sheridan is a big music fan and, does he come to you a lot with recommendations or artists that he loves? 
Well, he's kind of busy on nine shows, so he comes to me less now than he used to. But yeah, yeah I mean, Shane Smith and Whiskey Myers were both his idea. And then for uh, the other characters, like, you know, or on cameras, Lainey Wilson and Zach Bryan came from me. And it's just from the constant discovery because we love what we do. So we love the music. We love, you know, kind of finding what is going to be the next piece that's mutually beneficial for everybody, you know, so for the artist, for the show, for the storyline. And the fact that we got to work Lainey in as a songwriter, which was great, you know, and I don't know how much acting she had done before, but, you know, just, it, I think it was an easier role to kind of move into. And then she had great chemistry with Brian, and, you know, it, just, it, it worked out so well. So getting to provide opportunities for the people that you love and look up to is amazing. Well, we're in Nashville, so I have to ask how many Lainey Wilson fans we have in the room. <laughs> of course. She was great on the show, by the way. She was fantastic. Sabrina, you had mentioned to me just how artist-friendly the show is as well. And I think it's, it's probably interesting to talk about how, you know, Ryan Bingham was an artist before he was an actor. So talk a little bit about how artist-friendly the show is. Yes. Um, I mean, music is a part of the storytelling. Absolutely. Undoubtedly, it is something that is well-respected. It is something that there's a collaboration between ourselves and the artists and their managers and their labels, as you can see. Um, we work really strongly together because I think we both love each other's craft. They love the show. We love their music. Their music is a part of our show. They are a part of the Yellowstone family, very much so. Um, and that's really how we treat them, and that's how they treat us. They show up for us all the time. You know, um, Hayes has come out to perform for us. Danny has as well for some of our ad sales client events. Um, and insofar as art is friendly, we, uh, we, we will, you know, remind them, hey, this episode is premiering on Sunday. You're, this, is, this is where you're going to be featured. Here are some assets to post on social. We'll repost. We'll post about them. Well, if it's a live performance, we've actually worked really closely with partners at Shazam to say, we're going to pre-feed you those live performances so that it'll come back to the artist's masters. So when they're Shazam, they actually get the streams back. Um, so that's something that we've put in place that Shazam had never put in place before because we want to make sure that they're getting the credit that is due to them. We want them to be discovered. We want them to be talked about, to be loved, to be revered because we truly do love and revere our artists um, and the music placed in the show. Uh, and we're so happy when, when the management comes back and, and says, this was amazing. This is the uptick in streams. This is what's happened. Um, you know, we were discovered. We're now on this iTunes chart trending and going up after every day at post premiere. That to us is just the ultimate joy. Um, and it's just a giving back in a way that's, you know, just more than we could ever hope for and something that we are not able to do all the time. The show really does move needles in a way that we couldn't have anticipated. And it's, it's the fans. It's all of you that's really responding to it. And, you know, we say thank you. Um, and we're so happy that you're responding to the music and listening and, and being put on to these artists because they are incredible and they're, they're part of our show. So, And I have to give it to Paramount of, like, any network I've ever worked with, their promo and marketing is, like, beyond compare. I mean, there's so much support for the artists and so much engagement ahead of time to get it out to everybody because we're all as much a fan of the show as everybody else is. So it's really fun to just go, like, how else can we do this? Can we get somebody else out there? What can we do? And, I mean, Paramount seriously is, like, stellar at that. Even when I was doing a show screen, the TV series at MTV, it was the same thing. I've never seen the marketing for the artists and the music as much as I have with them. How much music are you listening to on a weekly basis? Because, you know, outside of the thousand other shows that you're working on and all the Taylor Sheridan shows that you do, never, when do you have time to listen to music, I guess, is the question. I'm never not listening. So the thing is, is that, like, it's very frustrating to most people who know me if they're around me because if it's not playing, I'm humming, whistling, thinking of, you know, mm -hmm. if there's music playing when someone's talking, I cannot hear them talk. I only hear the song. Um, and it's just sort of the way my brain works. Yeah. But um, always is kind of serious, the serious answer. I go to sleep, listen to music. I wake up, listen to music. It's sort of like my energy. You know, it's like until I turn something on, I can't move. And um, so it's it, the idea that I can help people and, and, like, you know, and look cool doing it. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, it, it's awesome. You know? Tell us about how you found Zach Bryan. When did that happen? And you were just randomly listening to Spotify. How did that happen? No, it was uh, on Twitter and YouTube. He kept posting his videos, and I was like, this guy's amazing, you know? And he's, like, fast and loose and passionate and, like, whatever. And I was like, this is great. And, you know, I kept seeing kind of his numbers sneak up a little bit, you know, and I'm finding them the same way everybody else is. 
And then I happened to write to him. It's the only DM I've ever done in my life. And, uh, and so I was like, hey, you know, I, I work on this show. You have no reason to believe me, but you can check out my IMDb, whatever else, you know, like, but uh, if you want to get on the phone, we can talk. But, you know, I think if you can get yourself to Nashville, uh, you know, Dave Cobb is a, a friend and, you know, he agreed to, you know, produce the two songs that we want to use on the show. And so, you know, um, but let me know if that sounds good. And I mean, he believed me, thank God. But like, it's also real weird. I mean, that's a leap of faith. And um, so, you know, he went out there, worked with him and it went amazingly well. We only used one of the songs that we recorded, but um, uh, it was an amazing experience. And then like now, you know, I'm just, I love Danny King as manager. We talk all the time and just look for new opportunities. And then that led to Zach Bryan being on camera. And uh, the good I'll do we used in one episode and that did amazingly well. It was a great use too, you know, so. Um, uh, having a featured use definitely makes a difference, but um, it, we were lucky to get him because now, I mean, you know, he's on fire and one of the best live shows I've ever seen. Um, uh, it's sometimes scary with how excited people are, but, um, <laughs> so, but um, you know, it, it, it was, it's just really exciting to be able to, to be able to do, you know, it's like I'm a music fan. I always have been. So, you know, you don't think growing up you're going to be able to help the people that you idolize, you know, and then like to be able to have a job where you get to do that. And you're like, wait, every day I get to do this. Now, it's not always exciting, but, you know, there's a lot of paperwork, politics, psychology and everything else. But most of the time for Yellowstone, it's actually always exciting. And talking about, you know, some of the other actors on Yellowstone, Luke Grimes getting signed to uh, Universal Nashville and has music out. I don't know if you guys knew that or not, but Casey, Luke Grimes, has music out. Was he always uh, a musician first, or how did that happen? Um, I can't speak to it too much. I know he's always played, because I got yeah. a call from one of my friends a long time ago, and he's like, I think I just played with that guy from Yellowstone. And I was like, what do you mean that guy? You know who you played with. And he was like, no, no, I know who he is. He's like, I don't know the character name. And I was like, okay. And he's like, and so I was like, are you talking about Casey? He's like, yeah. So he's played you know, guitar for a long time and whatnot. Um, and then I actually just got to see him um, with uh, Sabrina actually at uh, a venue in Venice, California, right before Stagecoach. And then we saw him at Stagecoach as well, which that would terrify the hell out of me to play to that many people. And he handled it like a champ and he sounds great. And you know, we were really lucky to be able to, you know, showcase the song. We're gonna talk about some stats from the show in a few minutes, Sabrina, but I wanted to ask Hayes and, and Danny, you know, has this helped you as far as other music supervisors reaching out to you about film and TV since they've seen the success that you've had from Yellowstone? Um, so one of the things that Sabrina and I were talking about, um, she's also equally as amazing as Andrea. Um, she invited me to come and sing for some of the execs at um, in, in Colorado. And there were a bunch of CBS execs there and they came up to me afterwards like very powerful women. And they said, hey, would you be interested in some on-camera opportunities uh, for you know, some shows um, coming up? And I said, of course, yes. I can't tell you what they are. Um, but uh, I've, I've been really lucky to be able to meet just that, that group of people. And I would not have had the opportunity unless I had the songs on Yellowstone first. And two, Sabrina had not invited me to come and perform for the event because that was why I was there. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Hayes, how about you? Uh, I don't know if um, the things that I've gotten over the last few years came or influenced by the being placed on Yellowstone, but uh, um, but I, I definitely feel it, you know, with with the audiences and and um, not only them discovering your music through that, but also they're they're given a a memory to attach it to, and a lot of people for music, it's you know, it's your first kiss, it's your it's a hard time. It's a breakup. It's a there, there's something you attach to it, and 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 with this show, you know, a lot of people uh, identify it with. You were talking about all I need is you. Like I'll think, I think I, mean, I, I I love that song. But I can't help but think about it in that show, in the scene that it's in, and and um, or scenes that it's in. Um, so anyway, it's just it's, I think it's just giving people a way not only to hear the music but something to to attach to until they make their own memories in life with it. Have you ever acted before? I, I have not. Um, uh, I thought I was gonna, when I, that was my first love was performing uh, as acting and, and um, I, I, I lettered in high school, which was, you know, the letterman jacket, the theater letterman jacket was a real cool commodity. Um, 
in my Texas high school, um, and then I'm I'm minored in theater. I studied it in in, in college, um, uh, but uh, but I've never done it professionally at all. Don't, I mean, don't we all think that he could be an actor? Seriously, I think <laughs> I'm rooting for Hayes Carl to be on a future Yellowstone spinoff show or something. But anyway, uh, Brian, how about you? As far as how this has also helped Shane Smith and the Saints with other projects because of Yellowstone. Well, we're, we're holding out for Taylor and Andrea. Just we want to be exclusive to them. So yeah. any shows that they work on. <laughs> That's uh, it. I mean, listen, it's all, it's all sort of interconnected. It's helped in so many ways. We're, Sabrina also brought Shane and the band up for, um, to play uh, a, an event in Montana. Um, for their sponsor, show sponsors, you know, different folks. Um, and so that's always great. You know, same thing like what Danny was saying. It's just nice to meet these people. Um, and then, you know, it's it's my job as a manager to stay in touch with Sabrina and say, hey, could you, you know, I want to invite some people to this show or that show. And Sabrina very cautiously sends me contact information and asks me to keep someone from Paramount CC'd, uh, which is very wise so that I don't go rogue and just start inviting these people to random everything. Um, but, it, you know, I think it's the, the, who knows what has yet to come in as far as sync opportunities. We haven't had... Uh, much other than maybe just some little like, um, you know, internet style co-branded things. Um, but I have, a, I have a feeling that, you know, people are continually watching these these seasons and these shows and opportunity uh, is going to come to, you know, to, to Hayes and Danny and all the other artists, I think, that have been a part of the show. Um, and, and I will also say you were talking about uh, just like, um, Sabrina was mentioning something about how the partners, and, and, and I think Andrea mentioned how everyone sort of supports the music. It was first uh, episode that Shane was in, Ram did something, Dodge Ram did something on their Instagram, which is like a million plus followers. So it's all those little things add up. It's like, we just want to be seen and heard, and then the, the music fans can make up their own minds. And I know how involved I am with those, but Sabrina's even more involved with those because of the like, sort of brand partnerships and whatnot with Paramount. And uh, I will say it definitely helps to get name checked too in an episode because right. in, that, in that episode, it was like Shane Smith and the blank Saints. Just, I don't know where this is going, so I don't swear. Um, but, uh, and then um, uh, when we had it in the next episode, I pointed out to Taylor, I was like, hey, we just obviously used that song in an amazing scene. You know, do you want to use a different song? And he goes, nope, go again. And I was like, all right, we're using the song as the next episode, too. So it was a nice way for people to, like, know who Shane Smith was from the shout-out, from the song, and then the song again, so you can't forget it. That's incredible. And, and they named the episode after the song. I mean, that's incredible. Yeah. You can't ask for anything more than that. That's incredible. Sabrina, you brought up some backstage, some incredible stats from the show. I would love if you could yes, I'm gonna read out a couple. tell us I, some of those. I did have to bring this up with me because they're so specific, but... Um, this is just a couple of examples of some placements and some needles that we've been able to move with the placements because of Andrea's great, uh, Andrea and Taylor's amazing taste in music and the art behind the music in the show because it, it really speaks for itself too. Um, so Blackberry Smoke, um, many of you know Blackberry yes. Smoke is a favorite of Yellowstone. Um, hey Delilah saw a 756% increase in Shazam's. All Over the Road saw a 300% increase in Shazam's and a seven overall 73% bump in physical sales. Uh, Coulter Wall's Sleeping on the Blacktop from season four landed number one on, on the Shazam US country chart, number seven overall post-episode premiere. Haley Witter's Black Sheep saw a 300,000 to 400,000 increase in streams per day in the week after the premiere. 65.88% of all Spotify streams for the song could probably be attributed to this placement. This is, came from management, so we're, we're very thankful for these numbers and, and them sharing it with us. Uh, Honey County, we also saw a nice jump in monthly listeners. You've about tripled from having the songs on the playlist. Uh, Jamie Wyatt, Hurt So Bad, more than doubled on streams on Apple Music and nearly tripled on Spotify. Lainey Wilson, Billboard did a great article on this. Uh, Watermelon Moonshine rose to number one on the Billboard charts. Um, it also scored 4.9 million official US streams and 10,000 downloads in just the month of December when it premiered. Uh, it also reached number five on Billboard's country digital song sales charts, as well as number 15 on the all format digital song sales ranking. Shane Smith, also Spotify streams jumped 66%. 
Um, Apple Music Streams tripled. Uh, All I See Is You, we, you spoke about this as well, peaked at number one on the Shazam Country Singles post Yellowstone. Uh, and it was added to the number six Apple playlist since Yellowstone. And Whiskey Myers, I don't know if everyone's been tuned in since season one, but we had a lot of great on-camera moments with Whiskey Myers. Um, they were our first, I would say, that we super really went into the marketing and promo with them. We actually did um, a music video for them. They had a song that hadn't had a music video. We made it for them with our marketing teams. Uh, did really, really well. Um, all three Whiskey Myers albums rose to iTunes Country Top 10. And they became the number one trending country artist on iTunes right after the premiere of every song in the show. That's significant. They went platinum, too. Went, platinum. went platinum. Congratulations. Wow. I didn't know that. And then, of course, the Zach story, which is just yes. amazing. Talk about, um, you and Andrea talk about the global impact of this show, because for many that live in Nashville, they remember that when, you know, the TV show Nashville had a global impact and really affected this city and kind of put it on the map. And this is what Yellowstone is doing, you know, for modern country. So talk about the global impact of Yellowstone. Uh, the funny thing is, is that, like, you know, it was, we were... Number one in the rating. I don't. I don't pay attention to this stuff, but I'm told so. But we were number one in the ratings of, um, you know, for season one. But tons of people hadn't seen it, you know. So it's like if I came here, people were like, yes. And then like if I went to coast, it was like no, you know. So it was a slow kind of build. And I think you know, if anything good came out of COVID, it was that a lot of people caught up on Yellowstone. So like suddenly everybody it kind of just branched out from like the middle of the country and it just kept growing and growing. And so it was really fun to see that finally by like season five, like my friends had actually seen the show, you know, cause they're always like, sure, the thing that you're doing, that's cute, whatever, you know? And then they're like, oh my God, the show's great. I'm like, thank you. <laughs> and so, um, and then, you know, I just was in England and Wales and everybody knew it there too, you know? And it's just like, because people appreciate good storytelling and whether that be in the show or in the music. So it's been really fun to see it kind of grow and grow. And there's a huge like country music audience in England and Australia and a bunch of places anyway. So um, it's been nice to see that it's, you know, gotten out of just a sort of small base of people. Yeah, yeah, the show is syndicated around the world. So um, from time to time, I'll have particular managers reach out and say, by any chance, did Yellowstone start streaming in England or in this part of the world? Because we see the streams going up. And we don't have any other reason why it would so suddenly go up. And it's because it's, it's just the discovery of the song that's happening around the world as the show is kind of getting out globally. So, um, which is fantastic. And it also, again, is just bringing the culture of the show just outside of the US where people are really understanding rodeo, cowboying, horse reining, horse cutting, like all of that. And it's just, and people are responding and they, they really want to know more. And of course I'd culture. be remiss if I didn't mention Kevin Costner has a band. I, oh, yep. yeah. Kevin Costner in the modern West. Yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, we have a very musical cast, right? So there's very Luke musical. that you mentioned. Ryan Bingham, obviously, yes. from season one was placed, and he's had a ton of on-cameras. Uh, Kevin is a huge music fan. Anyone that's ever known anything about his acting career is really, like, he's been choosing movie uh, music for his movies since, you know, The Bodyguard. Um, like, he's just a, a, gino a ginormous fan. And we also have a Kevin Costner uh, curated playlist on Apple Music. If anyone wants to go check it out, some of his favorite tunes, he put a playlist together for us. Who's your favorite character on Yellowstone? Go, Beth. Sabrina. Beth. Beth. Danny. Oh, I love Rip. Yeah. Who doesn't love Rip? Rip. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm not going with one answer. Both. Beth and Rip. Yeah. Beth and Rip. <laughs> Beth and Rip forever. Hayes. I'm old friends with Ryan. So uh, Ryan Bingham. Ryan Bingham. I, I'm, I'm going Beth too. <laughs> we love Beth. No one said Casey. All the ladies in the audience are, you know. Uh, let's yeah, hear it for our panelists today. The music of Yellowstone. And of course, if you guys haven't caught up on Yellowstone, you better before season five. Thank you guys so much. This Thank was incredible. You. Appreciate you it. Thank you, Billboard Live.